Mr. Brown, that's a little too close to Mr. Shit. Well, Mr. Pink sounds like Mr. Pussy. How about if I'm Mr. Purple? I mean, that sounds good to me. I'll, I'll be Mr. Purple. Yeah, not Mr. Purple. Some guy has some other job as Mr. Purple. You're Mr. Pink. She called it Doc. 
Bark all day, little doggy. Or are you gonna bite? Shoot me in a dream, you better wake up and apologize. This is it's the world's smallest violin playing just for the waitresses.
money. Everybody be cool, this is a robbery! Any of you fucking pricks move! And I'll execute every motherfucking last one of you! <laughs> Divine intervention. You know what divine intervention is? I think so. That means that God came down from heaven and stopped the bullets? That's right. That's exactly what it means. God came down from heaven and stopped these motherfucking bullets. I think it's time for us to leave, Jules. Don't do that. Don't fucking blow this shit off. What just happened here was a fucking miracle. Chill, Jules. This shit happens. Wrong. Wrong. This shit doesn't just happen. Do you want to continue this theological discussion in a car or in a jailhouse with the cops? We should be fucking dead, my friend. What happened here was a miracle, and I want you to fucking acknowledge it. All right, it was a miracle. Can we go now? Son. And when his daddy would visit, he'd come along. When they gather around and started talking, that's when Billy would take me walking. Out through the backyard, we go walking. Then he'd look into my eyes. Lord knows to my surprise, the only one who could ever reach me was the son of a preacher man. The only boy who could ever teach me was the son of a preacher man. You see what he was. Mm, yes, he was. Being good isn't always easy, no matter how hard I try. When he started sweet talking to me, he'd come and tell me everything is alright. He'd kiss and tell me everything is alright. Can I get away again tonight? The only one who could ever reach me was the son of a preacher man. The only was the son of a preacher man Yes, he was, was. He was, was. Me. 
motorcycle is this? It's a chopper, baby. Whose chopper is this? Zed's. Who's Zed? Zed's dead, baby. Zed's dead. <laughs> that Marilyn here is holding. Now, who will be our first contestants? Right here. Want to dance? No, 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 no. I do believe Marcellus, my husband, your boss, told you to take me out and do whatever I wanted. And now I want to dance. I want to win. I want that trophy. Right. So dance good. All right. I'm here for our first contestant. our first contestants here this evening. Young lady, what is your name? Mrs. Mia Wallace. And uh, how about your fella here? Lucy Vega. All right, let's see what you can do. Take it away. It was a teenage wedding and the old folks wished them well. You could see that Pierre did truly love the mademoiselle. From the chapel bell. Say la vie, say the old folks. It goes to show you never can tell. They furnished off an apartment with a two room robot sale. The cooler was crammed with TV dinners and ginger ale. But when Pierre found work, the little money coming worked out well. Say la vie, say the old folks. To show you never can tell They had a high five phone Oh boy, did they let it blast Seven hundred little records All rock, rhythm, and jazz But when the sun went down The rapid tempo of the music fell C'est la vie, c'est the old folks You go to show you never can tell They bought a soup it was a cherry red 53 And drove it down to Orleans To celebrate the anniversary It was there where Pierre Was waiting to the 
the lovely mademoiselle. C'est la vie, c'est the old folks, both the show you never can tell. Vincent, do you want to hear my Fox Force 5 joke? Sure. I think I'm still a little too petrified to laugh. No, you won't laugh because it's not funny. But if you still want to hear it, I'll tell it. I can't wait. Okay. Three tomatoes are walking down the street. Papa tomato, mama tomato, and baby tomato. Baby tomato starts lagging behind, and Papa tomato gets really angry. Goes back and squishes him. Says, ketchup. Mm. <laughs> ketchup. See you around. Look, you want to play blind man, go walk with the shepherd. But me, my eyes are wide fucking open. What the fuck does that mean? I mean, that's it for me. 
From here on in, you can consider my ass retired. Jesus Christ. Don't blaspheme. God damn it, I Jules. said don't do that. Hey, you know why you're fucking freaking out on us? Look, I'm telling my sellers today. I'm through. Well, why don't you tell them at the same time why? Don't worry, I will. Yeah, and I'll bet you $10,000 he lasts his ass off. I don't give a damn if he does. Marvin, what do you make of all this? Man, I don't even have an opinion. Well, you gotta have an opinion. I mean, do you think that God came down from heaven and stopped... Oh, what the fuck's happening? Oh, oh man. Shit. Oh, man, I shot Marvin in the face. Why the fuck did you do that? Well, I didn't mean to do it. It was an accident. Oh, man, I see some crazy-ass shit in my time, but just chill out, man. I told you it was an accident. He probably he went over a bump or hey, something. Hey, the car ain't hit no motherfucking bump. I keep hearing you're concerned about my happiness. But all that thought you're giving me is conscience, I guess. If I were walking in your shoes, I wouldn't worry enough. You and your friends are worried about me I'm having lots of fun Counting flowers on the wall That don't bother me at all Playing solitaire till dawn With the deck of 51 Smoking cigarettes and watching Captain Kangaroo Now don't tell me I've nothing to do Last night I dressed in tails Pretended I was on as long as I can dream, it's hard to slow the swinger down. So please don't give a thought to me, I'm really doing fine. You can always find me here and have a quiet time. Counting flowers on the wall, that don't bother me at all. Playing solitaire till dawn with the deck of 51. Smoking cigarettes and watching. It's good to see you, I must go, I know I look a front Anyway, my eyes are not accustomed to this light And my shoes are not accustomed to this hard concrete So I must go back to my room and make my day complete Counting flowers on the wall, that don't bother me at all Playing solitaire till dawn with the deck of 50 Cigarettes and watching Captain Kangaroo. Now don't tell me I've nothing to do. But don't tell me I've nothing to do. You read the Bible, Ringo? Not regularly, no. Well, there's this passage I got memorized. Ezekiel 25, 17. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Blessed is he who in the name of charity and goodwill shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness, for he is truly his brother's keeper and the finder of lost children. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. And you will know I am the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon you. I've been saying that shit for years. And if you heard it, that meant your ass. I never gave much thought to what it meant. I just thought it was some cold-blooded shit to say to a motherfucker before I popped a cap in his ass. But I saw some shit this morning made me think twice. See, now I'm thinking, maybe it means you're the evil man and I'm the righteous man. And Mr. Nine Millimeter here, he's the shepherd protecting my righteous ass in the Valley of Darkness. Or it could mean you're the righteous man and I'm the shepherd. And it's the world that's evil and selfish. Now, I'd like that. But that shit ain't the truth. The truth is you're the weak and I'm the tyranny of evil men. But I'm trying, Ringo. I'm trying real hard to be the shepherd.
that what I think it is? What do you think it is? I think it's a gun pressed up against my dick. <laughs> well, you thought right. Now take your hands from around my throat, nigga. What the hell's wrong with you, Jackie? Shut the fuck up and don't you move. Oh, what is this? What the fuck is hey, this, Hey, huh? hey, hey, now that ain't got nothing to do with you. I carry that all the time. You been talking to them police too much. Oh, the police didn't try and strangle my ass. Oh, come on, girl. You know I was just playing with oh, you. Oh, I ain't playing with you. I'm gonna unload both of these motherfuckers if you don't do what I tell you to do. You understand what I'm saying? Jackie, stop acting crazy. Do you understand what the fuck I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, woman, damn. Now sit your ass down on that sofa. Put a cherry on top. Booyah. What the fuck did Ordell ever do for us, huh? Beaumont. Who's Beaumont? An employee I had to let go. 
What'd he do? He put himself in a position where he was gonna have to do 10 years in prison. That's what he did. If you know Beaumont, you know ain't no goddamn way he can do 10 years. If you know that, then you know Beaumont's gonna do anything Beaumont can to keep from doing them 10 years, including telling the federal government any and every motherfucking thing about my black ass. Now that, my friend, is a clear-cut case of him or me. And you best believe it ain't gonna be me. You getting high already? It's just two o'clock. <laughs> it's that late. You know, you smoke too much of that shit. That shit's gonna rob you of your ambition. Not if your ambition is to get high and watch TV. Hello, my love. I heard a kiss from you. Red magic satin play near. Okay. Yeah, I'm just getting old. Seems I can't smoke a lap now without coughing. Coughing's good. It opens up the capillaries, you know. When you cough, you're pulling air, or in this case, smoke, into parts of the lungs that don't normally get used. And so 
coffee's good. It gets you higher. That's what I want to tell you. You see, she was bugging me the whole time. She got pissy with me because I wouldn't let her carry the bag. And then she started running her fucking mouth about, you know, like, because I couldn't remember where the car was parked right away when we came out. So then she got on me about that. Is it this aisle, Lewis? Is it that aisle, Lewis? It's totally fucking with my nerves, man. So what? You left her there? I, I shot her. You shot Melanie? Twice in the parking lot. You couldn't talk to her? Well, how, can you, how can you talk to her? You, know, you couldn't she, just hit her? Maybe, but I, at that, at that t moment, I don't know. I, you shot her twice? Is she dead? I, 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 pretty much. What do you mean, pretty much, Lewis? That ain't no fucking answer. Yes or no, is she dead? I, I think so. Yeah. You think so? Tell me, Lewis. She's is dead. she? She's dead. Where are you going? Spain. Madrid or Barcelona? Mm, Madrid first. Have you been there? I hear they don't eat dinner until midnight. You want to go? 
Thanks, but uh, you have a good time. You sure I can't twist your arm? Thanks for saying that, but no. Are you scared of me? A little bit. I'll send you a postcard. Will you? I sure will, partner. I'm not saying what I did was all right Trying to break out of the ghetto was a day-to-day -day fight Being down so long, getting up didn't cross my mind But I knew there was a better way of life And I was just trying to find You don't know what you do till you put under pressure Cross 110th Street is a hell of a tester Across 110th Street Pimps trying to catch a woman next week Across 110th Street Pushers won't let the junkie go free Across 110th Street Woman trying to catch a trick on the street You bet you Across 110th a better way out Shorting that coat, shooting that dope man you're copping out Take my advice It's either live or die You got to be strong If you want to survive The family On the upper side of town Will catch hell If we find a ghetto around And every city You'll find the same thing going down all I'm in the capital of every ghetto town. Let me sing it. Across a hundred and ten street, pimps trying to catch a woman that's weak. Across a hundred and ten street, wishes won't let the junkie go free. Oh, across a hundred and ten street, a woman trying to catch a trick on the street. Ooh, baby. Fucking scary. Yeah, well, I wanted it to be impressive. Scary tends to impress. Is it safe? No, it's better than safe. It's death proof.
sorry. You forgive me? But you have to be real nice to me for the whole rest of the time I'm here. <laughs> Promise. You ready to go to the lake? Mm hmm How about your little friend? You want to bring him? I don't know boys. If you really want him to come, she ain't one mine. So how about it? Boys or just us girls? Mm, us girls. I know what I said. What did you say? I know I said we shouldn't do this No, again, but you didn't say we shouldn't. You said we ain't ever gonna do that again. Yeah, but, I... but my ass. You said, not only are we never gonna play ship's mast again, but you also said, if you ever do what you trying to do now, to not only refuse, but that I had permission to physically restrain your ass if necessary. Now, did you or did you not say that? What? No, 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 no. Answer the question, motherfucker. Did you or did you not say that? Yes. I said that. However, whatever with your however.
10 years of, 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 of treading water and now race to the bottom. <laughs> Look, I never had much career to speak of, so I can't say I really know how you feel. What are you talking about? You're, you're, you're a stunt double. Come on, man. Shit. Rick, I'm your driver, man. I'm, I'm your gopher. I'm not complaining, man. I like driving you around. I like doing shit around the house and house sitting in the Hollywood Hills when you're gone. But I haven't been a full-time stuntman for a while now, and from where I'm standing... Going to Rome to star in movies does not sound like the fate worse than death that you seem to think it is. Come on now, you you ever seen a, 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 an Italian Western, huh? They're awful. It's, it's a fucking farce. Yeah, how many you seen? One, two? I've seen enough, all right? Nobody likes spaghetti westerns.
cents. Seventy-five cents. What if I'm in the movie? What do you mean? I mean, I'm in the movie. I'm Sharon Tate. You're in this? Mm-hmm. I play Miss Carlson, the Klutz. That's me. <laughs> but that's the girl from Valley of the Dolls. Well, that's me, the girl from Valley of the Dolls. Really? Really. <sighs> hey, Ruben, come out here. This is the girl from Valley of the Dolls. Patty Duke? No, the other one. The girl from Peyton Place? No, the other one. The one who ends up doing dirty movies. Oh. She's in this movie. Oh. Sharon Tate. Well, welcome to the Bruin, Miss Tate. Thank you for coming to our theater. Would you like to come in and see the show? Could I? By all means. Paxton Quigley's had the calls And he's feeling kind of burned down Paxton Quigley's had the calls And he's feeling kind of slowed down You're the one with the big mouth. And I would really enjoy closing it, especially in front of all my friends. But my hands are registered as lethal weapons. That means we get into a fight, I accidentally kill you, I go to jail. Anybody accidentally kills anybody in a fight, they go to jail. It's called manslaughter.
Kentucky woman, she shines in her own kind of light. She looks at you once in a day, what's wrong is all right. And I love her, God knows I love her. Kentucky woman, she gets to know you, she gets to own you. Just a western. What does that mean? Is it good? Pretty good. What's the story? I haven't finished it yet. I didn't ask for the whole story. What's the idea of the story? Well, <clears throat> it's about uh, this guy who's a bronco buster. It's a story of his life. The guy's name is Tom Breezy, but everyone always calls him Easy Breezy. Now, when Easy Breezy when his, was in his 20s and, and, and young and good looking, he could, he could break any horse that you could throw at him. Back then, he just had a way. Now, he's into his uh, 
late thirties and he takes a bad fall and messes up his hip. He's not, he's not, he's not crippled or anything like that, but, but he's got spine problems. He never had before and he spends uh, more of his days in pain than, than, than he ever did before. Cheapers, this sounds like a good novel. Yeah, it's not bad. Where are you in it? About midway. What's happening to Easy Breezy now? Well, uh, he's, um, he, he's not the best anymore. In fact, far from it. And he's coming to terms with what it's like to be slightly more used slightly more useless each day. It's okay, Caleb. It's okay. Sounds like a really sad book. Poor Easy Brazy. I'm practically crying and I haven't even read it. About 15 years you'll be living it. What? Nothing, pumpkin puss. I'm just, I'm just teasing you. You know something, you uh, you might be right about this book. I think it hits harder than I gave it credit for. I don't like names, like Pumpkin Puss, but since you're upset, we'll talk about that some other time.
go, go fetch her and tell her what? Go fetch her and tell her I'll give her a fat $5 gold right, piece. Right, right. Go fetch her and tell her I'll give her a fat, fat, five, fat $5 gold piece. She play her little chili pepper heart out, right? Right. Got it. <clears throat> I ain't gonna hurt her. I just want her to play the fiddle. Now go fetch her and tell her I'll give her a fat $5 gold piece. She play her little chili pepper heart out. It's gone. <laughs> 